Hey guys, so today I'm going to show you how I make a poster in Adobe Photoshop. So with most of my poster designs, or at least the ones that I post to YouTube, there is no client. So that means that these designs are 100% what I want them to be since there are no actual parameters. Basically, I just want them to look good. Now while this means I have the freedom to do literally anything, it also means that I usually have absolutely nowhere to begin. So to begin, I'll usually go to a stock photo site. In this case, I went to pexels.com and I searched for basically anything that inspired me to start a poster and I found this after a bit of digging. Now I really, really liked this one because it's very symmetrical and monochromatic and I thought maybe I could do something fun with it. So I'm gonna grab this picture and I'm gonna bring it into my poster template. And as you see, it's enormous, so I don't really, I mean, that's kind of cool. It's a very ghosty image, but I'm going to bring it down so it actually has more of a size to it. There we go. So you can actually see what's going on in the photo. Bring up my guides, and I kind of want to get that middle part of the bridge here right in the center of the page. I always press shift, but the update of Photoshop, it, uh, you don't need to press shift anymore. So I always end up not transforming things properly anymore because I'm not quite used to it yet. All right, so there we go, right in the center. All right, I'll zoom in and from this point, I mean, I like how that looks, but obviously I haven't done anything to it. So I'm not really gonna do that as a poster itself. So, at this point, I'll usually just kind of play around with the colors. So often I will just go to camera raw filter and see what I can do. I'll maybe boost the clarity a little bit. Maybe, maybe I should play with some texture. Yeah, I like increasing the texture a bit and then I can maybe bring up the exposure so it's just a bit lighter. Cause you see at the, do at the bottom there, it's just a little bit dark. So I can bring that up a bit and click okay. Now maybe I should get some color in here. So I'm gonna go adjustments photo filter and get some cooling, basically just bring in some blue. So just the tiniest, teensiest little bit of blue in there. I mean, I, I might, might change that later, but for now I'm just gonna have a little bit of blue because why not? All right, so the next thing I wanna do is I found this image of somebody holding a cup. And because my image you know, this image has this sort of bridge idea and uh, I thought I could maybe have the bridge going into this dude's cup. So I'll bring that picture in there and obviously I have to isolate this. So I'm going to use, no, <laughs> it didn't work. I'm just going to isolate it really close first or cut off all the bits first. And then I will use the magic wand and go back in here. Now obviously you see it's got a little bit, it's selecting just a bit too much around the cup there. So I'm just gonna erase the parts that I know I want erased. Like that and that. Okay, I need a bigger eraser here. It just gets it more exact so I know I'm getting exactly what I want and I'm only gonna go to maybe about there and then, ooh, no, I'm not gonna do the top of the cup. So then I can go around and get any imperfections and then I'm going to zoom in and probably just do the rest just using the eraser here. All right, erase, erase. Okay, that was pretty good. But now I think I'm just going to use the magic wand again and maybe just bring the tolerance down to like two. Yeah, that's, that's way better. Okay, we'll use the tolerance at a very, very low and we'll just erase that and then just straight up delete that. Now that looks pretty perfect, except for around the fingers, it looks pretty terrible. So we'll just go in and clean that up manually using the super, super, super tiny eraser. Okay, no, it needs to be super tinier, way super tinier. There we go. Yeah, that's almost something. Okay, and fix the cup there. And what else have we got? How's the other thumb looking? Hello, other thumb. How are you looking? You could use some work. There we go. Now this this cup and the hand, they're not going to be huge on my poster, I don't think, but I still want them to be pretty perfect. Okay, 
I need more zooming out. All right, poster's done, hooray. No, okay, okay, that'd be terrible. So I've got this cup and a hand here. Still got some stuff in there. Did I get everything? Did I get everything? I got everything, okay. Now I want this cup and the hand to be symmetrical with this bridge here. Here we go, and maybe like that. Yeah. So the idea that I have is to maybe switch this, the, uh, the bridge and the cars, vertically. Yeah, see that looks cool. And then figure out a way that that actually works with the cup. I'll bring the cup down a bit more. And then basically this, is, this part is just a little bit of refining to figure out exactly how I want this to look. Maybe I should make that smaller. One of these needs to be smaller. And I think that one, maybe a little, little bit bigger. Teensy bit bigger. Okay, teensiest bit bigger. And this can go the teensiest bit smaller. There we go, I'll bring that back up. Still make sure that's pretty symmetrical. All right, so that's a bit better. That's, you know, the, the road is filtering into the coffee cup now. All right, so with the road going into the coffee cup, I'm going to fix this edge here because I had to make it just a bit smaller. So I'm gonna select all of that and I'm gonna go fill content aware and hope it works. It doesn't always. Most of the time I need to do a bit of refining after that. Like in this case, I also do clone stamp. And I'll use the clone stamp to stamp away the bad parts that I don't like. All right, so we've got our road going into our mug, but, hmm. Maybe I'll make the top a bit darker here. So there's a lot of black and darkness up there. So I'm going to just make the whole top of this poster a bit darker. So I'll use the gradient tool, wherever it is. There's gradient tool. And I will select the gradient that goes to transparency and bring it down. Yeah, so that's nice and dark. And then I'll play with some of the blend modes and see what kind of a look I can get with that. Cause I just kind of want to darken up the top of the poster, but I don't really want to go super dark. If I go overlay and then I can play around with the fill here. So it's just a little dark, not, not super crazy dark. Hmm. Well, I'll probably adjust that later, but. All right, so the next thing is, I noticed that this little right side part isn't actually to the edge. So I'm gonna fix that. I'm just gonna select that and then do the content aware again and hope it works. Um, yeah, that mostly worked. I'm gonna zoom in just to see if I actually got that and I did not. So we're gonna go with the clone stamp again just to perfect it or try to perfect it. Often I cannot perfect it, so I just, you know, it's true, so you don't need to get too crazy. Um, well, that looks terrible. So how about we try harder? Um, yeah, that'll do for what I'm, for what I'm, no, that looks terrible. I take it all back, that looks terrible. Okay, maybe I just need to have, oh, it's super, super soft there, okay. I need a slightly harder brush and we'll just bring that in. All right, and do some more stamping. Stamp, stamp, stampity stamp. All right, I can live with that. Can you live with that? Uh, it's a bit repetitive there. So maybe I will, I don't know, I'll have to fix it again. This is the annoying part of, of posters and just all the little tiny details that you gotta fix because they drive you nuts otherwise. All right, let's go in and fix that a bit more. And I don't know if this is just me being overly perfectiony. I'm on the wrong layer, great. How's that? That'll do, yeah, that'll do. Okay, full screen it. All right, so this is our poster so far, and this needs camera raw filtering, which means 
I go in and I adjust the clarity a bit, increase that. I just want it to kind of match this background image a bit more. And the background image is very dark and kind of, I don't know, Christopher Nolan-y gloomy. So we're going to increase the texture. And because that underneath shot has a bit of blue, I'm actually gonna bring the saturation down really low here. So it's almost gray, but not. And then blue it a teensy, teensy bit. And then maybe bring down the exposure a bit and increase some shadows and let's see how that looks. Um, yeah, that's not too bad actually. Maybe it's a bit dark. It kind of looks like a zombie hand. Yeah, I don't really want a zombie hand holding the cup. Maybe it needs more color. No, okay. We're gonna have to start with what I had before. Unfortunately, we're gonna have to do that all over again, but less zombie this time. Yeah, there we go not quite as much on this desaturation. Okay, still upping the clarity, down shadows, and making a tiny bit blue. Okay, how's that? Is that less zombie? I don't remember what the other one looked like, but I think that's less zombie. Maybe. I don't know, it'll be fine. That's how we're gonna go with it. All right, I'll make sure that's just a bit more centered. See, I like that what this says on the mug. Eat well, travel often, and then it's cars going into a mug. You know, hilarious or something. Not really sure, but I just really like how it looks. All right, now the next thing I'm going to do is go with my third image. And I'll close these other ones here. And my third image I found was of some fancy clouds and some mountains, mostly mountains. Not so much clouds, but they're cloudy mountains. So I'm gonna bring that on there and just see how that works. Now, these kind of images are really nice just for adding texture. So if you go around and you play with the uh, the blend layers, you can kind of see some of the really neat textures you can get. See, that's cool. That would be great for under some text. See that? That looks really cool. It's not quite what I'm going for, but I can at least appreciate that it looks pretty amazing. Yeah, I like that. Oh well, well we're not gonna use it. Even overlay, see that's cool because you've got the, the texture of the mountains on the hand. And that's really cool actually. Hmm. Maybe I should do something like that. But I kind of want to have these mountains behind this guy holding the coffee cup. Because in front just, I mean it, it looks really cool but it doesn't make a lot of sense. Not that this image makes sense, but it's just not what I'm going for. Maybe next time. So nothing else in these blend layers is giving me much to go on. That's not bad though. So what I'm going to do is put that underneath dude's coffee cup and then maybe bring it down like really low here, super, super low. And then I'm gonna play with the blend layers again because now that we're under that cup and the giant hand, we can see what else we can do with this. Hmm. Actually, maybe what I'll do first, bring it back up and then we'll go filter, camera raw filter, because I use that all the time. And it's probably my favorite. So we'll go clarity a bit more. Yes, increase the clarity. And then saturation, boom, all down. No, not all down, maybe a little bit. To there, so mostly completely desaturated. And then I'm gonna bring in a little blue. Not too much though, because it already had a bit of blue in it. Um, is that good? Let's see, maybe exposure? No, I think exposure is probably fine and a bit more contrast and everything else I think looks okay. So we're going to okay that. See, that looks pretty cool. And then I'm going to bring that down maybe here. And the point of the mountains, there, I mean, there is no point to these mountains. It's just to kind of look cool. I mean, it's, it's actually a good poster just having this and then a lot of white space down here, but I like the mountains and I want to see if I can make them work. And if not, then we'll just, you know, we'll scrap them. But if I can make them work, then that would be great. Hmm, although so far they're not working. I need to figure out maybe darker color. Yeah, that's not bad. You have them down there. And then I'm just gonna totally erase that whole top of the picture here so we can blend it in nicely with the road and, you know, our main image. So using a giant eraser brush, I'm just going to erase, 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 erase. And a little bit more erasing here. 
Now, I'm not too worried about erasing the tops of the mountains because we do have that kind of misty look going on here. And the whole center of this picture is mostly just mist. But the one thing I do notice is that these mountains here, they are still a bit lighter than I want them to be. So I'm gonna go back into Camera Raw Filter because I just default to that. And I'm gonna bring up the, well, the clarity just a bit more. Just that the clarity, uh, it always seems to add just a bit of drama. So I like that a lot. And then maybe a bit more contrast. And then we will drop the exposure a little bit for more darkness and then okay. That's a bit better. Now I like bringing it up just to compare it a bit more directly so we can see how close those two are to each other, you know, in terms of tone and shadows and everything. I mean, yeah. The mountains, they they actually kind of work, but they also interfere a bit. But honestly, I like them, so I'm keeping them. And as I mentioned, there's no client, so, you know, I get to say what goes. Yay! Okay, so I'm going to bring this guy, the little hand with the coffee cup, or the mug anyway, um, just a bit bigger because I want to drop it down a bit. And I need to make it bigger to make that look better. There we go. Now I've also noticed that the size of the hand here are still a bit rough. So I'm going to go in with a super fine little eraser tool and just make sure those edges are perfect. I'm doing this all with a mouse so it gets a bit tricky. It would probably be better if I used um, like a tablet, but I'm not. So we're just going to have to deal with this. I'm also using a really cheap mouse too, which makes it super hard. But let's see what I can do. Now, one thing I could do with this is using the uh, the refine edge or uh, making a mask and then refining that edge. But often I like to just go in just straight with the eraser tool. One, because when I was you know initially learning Photoshop, we didn't have the refine edge or any sort of that tool. So I kind of learned just to use the eraser. And two is that if I'm just using the eraser, just manually like this, then I know I'm gonna get exactly what I want. And yeah, it takes a lot longer, like a, like a lot longer, but I like it, so it works. I will always take the long way if I know I'm gonna get to exactly where I need to be. I'm gonna do the other side here, just trying to be very precise, getting that hand, come on hand. Yeah, just gotta get that tiny white edge and then hopefully it'll look a bit more, obviously not realistic, but just a bit, um, I don't know, better, <laughs> better overall. And that's what we're going for, better overall in general. All right, now let's do some more hand. Oh, I think I messed that up there. Did I mess that up? Maybe, but we're almost done, so yay. And then I'm gonna bring up that eraser there and do little bits here like trying to narrate doing a ridiculous amount of erasing. It's, it's weird. All right, there we go. And I think that's good. No more white bits. Now I could play around with some of the, uh, the layer styles and maybe give it a drop shadow, but yeah, I'm not sure if I like that or not. It kind of looks better without the drop shadow or anything. Um, although I could make a bit of darkness around it and I could do that with an inner shadow. Oh yeah, orange, that's a great shadow. Let's not use orange. So we're gonna make that, ooh, let's increase the size. See, it makes it just a bit darker on the edges, which kind of works for the hand, but I'm not sure if it works for the coffee cup here. Maybe like that, let's how, see how that looks before and after. All right, I kind of like that. So we're gonna go with okay and bring it back to full screen again. And then I'll check that out again. I think I'm good with that. Cool, all right. So at this point, when I kind of have all my elements in place, the structure is there, everything's basically good to go. That's when I'll get, um, well, I'll start playing with the colors a bit more. Obviously this one has a very monochromatic look, everything does, but that also means that if I want to give the whole thing sort of one consistent color, it's a bit easier. So let's go in and do, I don't know, a blue and the purple because those are fun colors. Super blue and super purple. And then I'm just going to use the gradient tool. 
and make sure we have our blue to purple gradient and go waza. And then play with the blend layers and see, ooh, that's pretty. Ooh, that's kind of magical. Wow, I like that. All right, and we'll play with the fill and often you can get a really, really cool, just very mild color effect by doing that. See, that's not bad. Kind of like that now, but do I like it more than the monochrome? Actually, yeah, I do. Okay, so that could work, but I'm also gonna duplicate it, not to increase the saturation there, but to see what other color combinations I can come up with. So I'm just gonna go and change the hue saturation of that layer and see if I like another color combination even more. I should probably bring up the, uh, the fill a bit more because it's kind of hard to see. And then go back into hue saturation and see if I like anything else. So I don't really like the red to green. The purple to brownish color, I guess it's not bad. But, hmm. I think this original kind of works the best so far. Maybe a bit more saturated. Is saturated a word? If not, I have just made it a word. So it is now. Yay for words. Okay, how about I try something totally different? We're gonna delete that layer. Yes, delete that layer. And then I'm gonna come up with another gradient. We're gonna try something a bit more, I don't know, sepia. So we're gonna do like a orange and a yellow. And we'll gradient that on a new layer. And voila. And then we will go, I say and then so much, don't I? Well, that's Photoshop. Let's do this and then this and then this. Wow, that's kind of magical, isn't it? Wow. There's a lot of magic happening here. Ooh, pin light's not bad. It kind of looks like the apocalypse is happening at the top of the poster, and then the not apocalypse is down here, which is always a fun concept. So let's try just a little bit. Ooh, okay, so that's kind of nice. So let's just, um, yeah, just like a little bit of sepia in there. Now, do I like that better than that? Hmm. Problem is I like them both. And when I like them both, I can never decide. And then it usually takes me like an additional hour of playing with colors before I can figure out which one I actually want to go with. Yeah, that's my poster design process. Playing with everything until I get something that I really, really like. And then making one small change and not being able to figure out which one I prefer. Yeah. But I guess that's pretty much all of design, isn't it? Especially when there's no client. Oh boy. I don't know, I'm, st I'm completely torn which one I like better. Okay, let's try maybe increasing the fill here. Okay, so that's very, very old school Apocalyptica. Wait, Apocalyptic. Apocalyptica is a band. They're a really great band. I like them a lot. Okay, what if maybe I just make everything else a bit more crazy? And when I say crazy, I mean less crazy, of course. So what I'm going to do is go into here, the little mountains, and maybe I'll add some noise. Not a ton, just a little bit. Whoa, okay, that was too much. Maybe, yeah, like that much just to give it a bit of texture. So you can see that tiny bit of, bit of noise just on the mountains there. And then I will do exactly the same thing with the car bridge thingy. All right, and then I'll do the same, obviously, with the hand in the cup. Add noise. Mmm, so noisy. I like the noise. The noise is nice. Noise. Okay, now that that has made this whole poster, a little bit more dramatic. Oh, see that looks, yeah, it still looks good without the mountains. Well, tough cookies, I like the mountains, so we're going with the mountains. But I'm going to go adjustments and curves and play with the curves. Mmm, curves. Mm, which curves do I like? It's always the trick, is getting exactly the right curve you want without going too insane. All right, so how is that? Does that work? Yeah, I think that works, because that actually seems to match the top of the poster a bit better. I think. Yeah. 
wonder what this whole thing would look like reversed. You know, I'm not even gonna check because again, I think I would like it and I would get even more indecisive. All right, so I'm gonna bring this gradient down just a little bit because I think I want it to be a bit darker at the top like that. Because now we have this whole balance issue where the top has a lot of darkness and the bottom has a lot of darkness, but I want that to be kind of equal. Is that equal? Okay, maybe I'll bring it down a little bit. And yeah, that's most of the process, is just trying out everything and hoping everything kind of works at some point. All right, now I am also wondering if maybe I should bring up this hand to the center point in the poster, or maybe just a bit lower than the center point. Just so it's not, I don't know, it, it felt like it was just too out of the way before. So of course, bringing up the hand means I also now need to go in and fix the hand. And maybe I'll just use the polygon lasso. Is it polygon? What's it called? The polygon lasso tool. Oh, I was right. Hmm. Cool. All right. And then I'll use the polygon lasso tool again and bring it all the way down here. Haha. -ha. The hand is good. Okay. All right. Do I like that? Yes, I like that a bit more than when it was too low. Oh, maybe right there. Maybe higher. Yeah, okay. Now, what else do I need to do? I need to bring the color back because I did get rid of those color layers. Oh, and back to my indecision. What to do, what to do. Maybe I'll do that. No, I will just do maybe a slight, okay. I like the slight, slight sepia. And how about a slight, slight blue purple? Okay, both totally work, but I think the orange and the uh, yellow just have a bit more of the feel that I'm kind of going for here, which is the, well, the sepia, the monochromatic with a slight bit of color, whereas the blue and purple is nice, but I feel like I also do a lot of blue and purple in all of my other work, so maybe we'll just try to change things up this time and go orange and yellow. And you can totally, totally disagree with me in the comments on this. That's, I mean, I already disagree with myself, so, but I'm gonna go with it. So, tough cookies world. All right, now I think this poster design is almost done, but one thing I wanna do is see how it looks with a border. That's one thing I like doing with poster designs that are uh, very monochromatic, don't have a lot of color in them, is adding a border, just to see how a border might look. Now, we don't want an orange border, that would be crazy. So we'll take a sample from one of the very, very light white colors in here and we'll do a border. Oh, like maybe we'll try 25 and we'll be inside and that's a tiny border. No, we're gonna do that again. We're gonna go stroke and we're gonna make it slightly bigger and how about 35? That's not bad. You can go with that. This could totally be in a magazine. Yeah, it should have text on it though. We have this text. One, one thing I could do is go in and erase this text, the eat well, travel often, but honestly it fits really well with a bunch of cars going into it. And uh, yeah, I don't think we need to go in that, uh, that crazy quite yet or in this poster design at all because I kind of like how this is all working together. Now, one thing I could do is go into my text layer here. Now, this is the, the text that I have set up before I start every poster. You know, the poster name, my, my name, and the date, and the poster number. And then I can go in, and I've got it set up. So if I have a color overlay over the whole folder here, I can change the color. But I think white is probably the best color I could go with here, unless I want to take it, uh, again, one of those sample colors, like the white sample colors from, uh, from the border here try that. Wow, that really did nothing. It's like slightly different, but now it's at least very consistent with the rest. So we'll go with that. All right, now I'm kind of wondering if I should maybe make this just a bit more blue instead, because the orange and the, uh, well, the sepia tone is nice, but maybe I should just try to enhance the blue instead. Not the blue to purple, just kind of the blue overall and see what that looks like. Yeah. 
So we'll just grab a blue color, any blue color, maybe even like a bluey purple color, or just a bluey blue. We'll go with that bluey blue, that one, that one. And then I will just, we're on a new layer, so we'll go fill, foreground color, and now we've got our blue. And then I can go down and play with the blend effects and see what our blue does to the poster. Now the lighten is actually pretty nice. So, oh wait, lighten or screen? Screen's actually nice because it doesn't take away from the detail here. So we're going to just see how that looks. See that adds just a tinge of blue to the whole poster without making it too blue. So that's kind of nice. All right, so at this point, I think it is entirely possible I may have added too much noise in here. It's just a bit too textury, but I'm not gonna undo it. I'm kinda just gonna live with it because I don't hate it, it's just a bit noisy. It, uh, it takes away a lot of the sharpness of these images, which is not overly intended, but uh, we're just gonna go with it. And I obviously don't want to make this tutorial way too long because I mean this could definitely be hours, hours and hours and hours. It really depends on how much, well on my level of indecision and exactly how much work I want to put into this poster. Now normally if I've added too much noise I would probably just you know replace the images and do all the effects again. Um, but uh, yeah I'm just gonna go with it this time. I erased a little bit more of the mountain there and maybe bring it down a bit more. I think that's okay. All right, now I wanna make sure again, everything is nice and centered. Just, you know, every once in a while while you're working, things can get off center. And I just like making sure everything is perfectly perfect. Like that or that. Yeah, okay, we're gonna go with that. That seems perfectly perfect. And I also want to see what maybe a larger stroke would look like. Maybe a 45 with the, again, the same white color. It's just a bit thicker, which I think might work a bit better. Now we can switch on and off to see what it looks like with or without. And honestly, I'm good with it either way. I do like how it frames the, the whole poster otherwise though. So uh, I think we're gonna go with the stroke or with the, the border, we should call it. It's a border now. I could rename the layer, but honestly, I don't have too many layers. I don't really need to get uh, crazy with the naming quite yet. And they're pretty organized. I've got my text and my background. So it's, you know, pretty organized. Now we need to name this poster. So I'm going to call it, well, traveled and then because because I always need to have you know a subtitle um coffee for the road coffee a coffee for the road clever right not really coffee for the road okay now am I done is the question I ask myself about a billion times when I'm working on a poster am I done and often I will either be, well, I mean, usually I'll just be done or I will spend another couple hours and end up making something completely different. But in this case, I like the general everything that's going on. It's, uh, it's not bad. It's not maybe as dramatic as it could be, but I mean, we don't need to go super dramatic with everything, but I will get rid of these other color layers as to not tempt me from making them visible again. So there you have it. There is a basic how to design a poster idea. And uh, again, all the images I got were from pexels.com. So it's all free. Um, and then I just, you know, put the little, uh, the link in the description below. And mostly it is just picking images and playing with them and then cutting them out and then seeing how the different colors work with them and constantly, constantly hiding and showing different layers to make sure that you like how something looks, and if not, then you fix it. Hmm. Yeah, it's better with that. <laughs> All right, now the blue, the blue is good. Yeah, again, everything, just, just, you just, just so much time just spent on, on and off, on and off. Do I like that? Do I not like that? Should I try something different? But again, I think we are good. And we should maybe wrap this up. All right. So yeah, yay poster design, woo. 
If you have any questions about my process, which you probably will, um, put them in the comments below. If you want to see me do something else, maybe with this poster, I mean, we could get really crazy with this. Um, we could totally do something else. And uh, yeah, maybe let me know if you think there's something else I could do with this poster. I mean, obviously I could get go crazy with the liquify tool here and just, you know, do the kind of this thing and, uh, well, if you bring it up a little bit higher, we can make this super crazy, super crazy poster. Eh, it's obviously not what I'm going to go with, but sometimes it's fun. It's like when you're playing a video game and you just want to, you know, have a save point and you kill everyone and then you load that previous save. It's fun. That's kind of what I've just done. Yeah, that looks terrible. All right. And we can undo that. Perfect. And we're back to normal. But yeah, so if you have any ideas of if if there's any direction that you think I could take this poster um, or if you like it or if you think I should have stopped maybe like 20 minutes ago, then please let me know. But uh, again, I mean, this isn't for a client. This is just for me. So, you know, however I kind of like it, that's where it's going to be. And that's the fun part of random poster designs. And that's why I continue to do them because they're just really, really fun. So thank you so much for watching guys and uh, let me know if you want to see any other tutorials um, in the future in Photoshop and Illustrator and in InDesign and uh, even in Affinity because I have started using that now too. So that should be fun. So yeah, let me know and I'll see you guys later. Bye.